Hi, welcome to Coffee Break with Researchers. Our Coffee Break today is about a paper on inclusive growth in cities, a sympathetic critique. It is written by Neil Lee. He is an associate professor of economic geography at the London School of Economics and Political Science. Coffee Break with Researchers presents you with cutting edge insights on regional development and innovation. We ask researchers directly and in a personal manner about their work. We make scientific knowledge accessible to all. Good morning, Lee. It's very nice for me to have you here. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm having a Brazilian black coffee. Which one are you having? I'm having a sustainably sourced Aramco coffee. We're not sure of the provenance, but it's very good. I uh, recently read a paper of yours on inclusive growth in cities. Uh, could you please tell me uh, what the main idea of the paper was about? So, Cities across the OECD have been launching inclusive growth strategies with the aim of first of all growing the economy but doing so in a way which benefits disadvantaged residents or disadvantaged groups and this paper is a sympathetic critique of that agenda because I think it's a really good idea this sort of you know the idea of, of sort of growing the economy in a way which benefits disadvantaged groups I'm very sympathetic for that but I think the way that the policies are currently being enacted is problematic so that's why it's a critique. It sounds very interesting. So which ones were the main arguments of the paper? So what, we, what I do in the paper is I look at how inclusive growth is being operationalized in practice. And one of the first problems we find is that it's an extremely fuzzy concept. You know, with, even within the same city or the same region, that of policymakers often think they're talking about very different concepts. So some people think inclusive growth is about environmental sustainability, some people think it's purely about the labour market, some people think it's about something else entirely. Uh, and this is problematic. So that's my, f my first sort of finding. My second finding is that the way that it's operationalised at a local level is often quite problematic uh, because the powers of local areas don't align with what you might hope an inclusive growth strategy would consider. So we saw examples of everything from um, playgrounds to waste bins being included in inclusive growth strategies. These are important things, but I think there's a big question about whether they belong in an inclusive growth strategy. This is indeed a very fascinating idea. So which ones were your main motivations in doing this paper? So my motivation for writing this paper really is because I do a lot of work with policymakers um, and they are increasingly talking to me about inclusive growth and what could happen uh, to try and make the, you know, try and make growth benefit disadvantaged groups. And this was a big policy agenda. It was mentioned in the UK in the budget. The OECD had a research program focused on the idea of inclusive growth. And inclusive growth, really, it became this sort of buzzword. You sort of saw it everywhere. And when I see a buzzword like inclusive growth, even though I, I like the general idea, I think it's important that it is critiqued and critiqued in a way which hopefully improves it for future use. This is a very sound uh, motivation, I think. So what would you recommend to policymakers based on your findings? So I have, I guess, several policy recommendations. The first is clarity of con concepts. And some people think that this doesn't matter, that it's because imp inclusive growth is politically acceptable. You know, nobody can be against it. But the problem is it's becoming sort of a meaningless buzzword, which is just applied to economic development strategies, regardless of they're doing whether they're doing anything inclusive. So my first recommendation would be that we need sort of stronger and uh, more consistent metrics about inclusive growth to, so that we can hold policymakers to account. My second implication is that you know, we, need to, we need to learn more about how exactly inclusive growth strategies are working on the ground. There's too little evaluation or certainly too little systematic evaluation of, of how policy is making um, or how, how we can do inclusive growth. And I think that's a real problem because there's a danger at the moment that, that the policy is outstripping the academic evidence in this area. Neil, I think this is a great paper. Thank you very much for clarifying it for us and I wish you all the best for your future research and hope to see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in more details about this academic publication, you can find here the link below. Find us on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube or listen to our podcast on Spotify. See you next time. Bye-bye.